Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in sophomore English. We turn now to unit number two. I'm with you on page 220, 221, 222. As you, uh, as you look at those pages, notice that the big question, as it's listed for you at the top of 222, is a question about conflict. It is a fascinating question. Can progress be made without conflict. In other words, is conflict an inherent necessity in the lives of humans? Now, to, be good, to begin all of this, of course, we got to get a definition of conflict in your notes on page 222, the struggle. Obviously, we've got some vocabulary we're going to point out on 223. I'm just going to move through these introductory pages really quickly to get to a Langston Hughes short story as a model. The elements of short stories, obviously, we've already covered this in our freshman year. We obviously talked about it in Unit 1, but let's go back over it again just to be sure. We've obviously got several major elements of the short story, right? We've got character, characterization, character development. We've got issues of setting. We've got issues of conflict and plot. We've got climax. We've got resolution. We've got theme, right? Notice the theme is not... Right? Read it with me on 224. The theme is not a summary of the story's events. Instead, it's a generalization about what the events mean. Namely, of course, level 2A in our reading annotative approach, right? They give you a nice schemata on 224 to kind of give you a sense of it. On to page 225, the ideas of genre and structure. The genre is a classification of works of fiction that share certain elements such as uh, character, types, moods, common plot patterns. Genres include mysteries, fantasy, realistic fiction. Short stories appear in all fictional genres from traditional tales with formulaic plots to online experiments in which the reader decides who the characters are and what they do. A story's structure is the way in which the events of the plot unfold. Uh, we've got several common genres there provided for you in the schemata on page 225 from realistic and speculative. We'll qualify it as science, uh, science fiction uh, to historical to humorous and even to parody. Go over to page 226 characterization in short stories. We got all different kinds of characters. Oh, we want to write this down. We're going to come back to each one of these concepts in detail, but we're just kind of summarizing here. Notice the types of characters in your little chart on page 226. We can have flat or stock characters, which have just one or two traits. We can have round or complex characters, which have many traits, including both faults and virtues. We can have static characters. They don't change during the story. And we can have dynamic characters, which change as a result of the experiences they undergo in the story. Of course, characterization have motivations. They have sometimes conflicting motivations. And characterization, of course, can either be direct that is to say, direct characterization, the narrator, the character, or voice telling the story directly states a character's traits, or indirect characterization, the narrator reveals usually through dialogue of a kind. And they give you examples on page 226. I'm not going to go through all this with you. I just want you to be aware of it and read it on your own. The structure and analyzing the structure in a short story on 227 is important. So notice, for example, we've got the story's structure told in chronological order or in flashbacks. Uh, I want you to know this uh, word pacing. Do you see this word on 227? Pacing. The speed or rhythm of the writing influences how readers experience a story. Slow pacing can create tension or suspense by delaying an anticipated event. You can think about contents of the dead man's pocket uh, story where it took us forever to find out whether the guy was going to fall off the ledge or make it back into his room, right? S suspense being developed. Authors may slow the pace of events by adding detailed descriptions of the action or of a character's thoughts and feelings. By contrast, fast pacing creates a sense of energy and excitement. Short and even fragmented sentences and rapid cutting from detail to detail increases the story's pace, right? Now let's do a quick close read of character development and story structure. Notice as we did in Unit 1, we also now have in Unit 2, on page 228, we have noticed some blocks, some boxes that are colored. Character development, characterization, characters' motivations, dynamic characters, and then under structural elements, we have setting, conflict, plot, and narrative effects. All of this, of course, we want to pay attention to in our model. Let's turn to it now. The model is Early Autumn by Langston Hughes. Now, we've already met Langston Hughes back in Unit 1. He was the one that 
uh, turned us on to, to Marian Anderson, that, that great little bi uh, biographic piece about the, the amazing singer. Uh, we're now going to turn to a short story by Hughes. Hughes, this amazing writer who is able to produce in so many different genres, from poetry to fiction to nonfiction, as we saw in Unit 1. Uh, on page 229, read with me though one more time, Langston Hughes, there his dates are, 1902 to 1967, distinguished prolific author who first came to prominence during, we used this term before, the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. Um, you're going to learn the most about this, Harlem Renaissance and Langston Hughes, during your junior year study next year, because we do American authors at Worland High School in our curriculum in the English department. Although Hughes is probably best known as a poet, he was also a playwright, a song lyricist, a novelist, and an author of short stories. In the following short story, Hughes depicts an unexpected meeting between former sweethearts in a New York City park. In little more than 400 words, Hughes vividly portrays a few moments in time and a lifetime of regret. Let's go to work with it. The title of the, uh, of the short story is Early Autumn. Notice the title I'm reading with you at number five in the box suggests that the season of the year is important to the story's meaning. Autumn is a time of endings, ending of summer obviously. The fact that the title says autumn comes early suggests that an early ending comes too soon. Let's read the story. When Bill was very young, they had been in love. Many nights they had spent walking, talking together. Then something not very important had come between them, and they didn't speak impulsively. She had married a man she thought she loved. Bill went away, bitter about women. Notice our sidebar here at number six, conflict and plot. The first paragraph provides compact exposition that rapidly fills readers in on the character shared past and likely conflict. Yesterday, just now back to the story, walking across Washington Square, she saw him for the first time in years. Bill Walker, she said. He stopped. At first he did not recognize her. To him, she looked so old. Mary, where did you come from? Unconsciously, she lifted her face as though wanting a kiss, but he held out his hand. She took it. I live in New York now, she said. Oh, smiling politely. Then a little frown came quickly between his eyes. Note at number seven in your side box, this is what we call an example of indirect characterization. Read it with me. Details emphasize the two characters' differences. Mary recognized Bill, but she looks so old to him. She seems to seek a kiss, but he offers only his hand. Bill seems to have moved on, while Mary lingers over memories of this lost love. Always wondered what happened to you, Bill, she says. I'm a lawyer, nice firm, way downtown. Married yet? Sure, two kids. Oh, she said, on to page 230. A great many people went past them through the park, people they didn't know. It was late afternoon, nearly sunset, cold. Note even in the sentence, although they, their textbook company doesn't point this out, note the varying of sentence lengths. We talked about this, right? Great writers, we said very sentence length. Notice the way in which you have a fairly long uh, or medium length sentence, a couple of them, and then notice nearly sunset cold. Number two, notice that we're playing the game of endings, aren't we? Right? Nearly sunset, that is to say, end of the day. And of course, cold can have multiple meanings. It can mean, of course, the weather is cold, but it can also mean like... This, this relationship that was once hot now is cold. We continue. We have three children. I work in the bursar's office at Columbia. You're looking very, he wanted to say old. Well, he said, an example here, number eight of dynamic characters. Mary's undergone many changes since she knew Bill. She's married, his children, looks considerably older. She understood, back to the story, she understood. Under the trees in Washington Square, she found herself desperately reaching back into the past. She'd been older than he then in Ohio. Now she was not young at all. Bill was still young. Again, number nine, conflict and plot. The chronological order is interrupted by a brief memory that provides important information about differences in the characters' ages. And then back again, we live on Central Park West, she said. Come and see us sometime. Sure, he replied. You and your husband must have dinner with my family some night, any night. Lucille and I'd love to have you. 
The leaves fell slowly from the trees in the square, fell without wind, autumn, dusk. She felt a little sick. At number 10, notice narrative effects. Autumn and dusk both represent endings. The fragmented description of the setting creates a broken and melancholy effect. We'd love it, she answered. You ought to see my kids, he grinned. Suddenly the lights came on up the whole length of Fifth Avenue, chains of misty brilliance in the blue air. That's my bus, she said. He held out his hand. Goodbye. When, she wanted to say, but the bus was, was ready to pull off. The lights on the avenue blurred, twinkled blurred. And she was afraid to open her mouth as she entered the bus, afraid it would be impossible to utter a word. Suddenly she shrieked very loudly, Goodbye! But the bus door had closed. The bus started. People came between them outside, people crossing the street, people they didn't know. Space and people. She lost sight of Bill. Then she remembered she had forgotten to give him her address or to ask him for his or tell him that her youngest boy was named Bill too. The final box here, number 11, motivation. The detail about her son's name reinforces all the preceding details that suggest Mary still loves Bill. For Mary, their relationship did indeed end too early. Let's go quickly now to uh, levels two and three on this one, just to um, you know, kind of appreciate how a, a gifted writer like Hughes can create a lot of tension, a lot of conflict, as as your textbook said, in you know less than five hundred words. At two a, what is for you the major theme of this story? Some will qualify it as the title itself, endings. Some will see it not so much as endings, as much as it is about longings, wishing. Wishing for something that is now ended, that hadn't ended. And of course, by our sophomore year, we have probably gone through one or two relationships that help us to appreciate this kind of an experience. By the time you're a senior and the seniors that I teach, lots of seniors will say a story like this is very common to the experiences of a high school student. There's, you had uh, opportunities for a relationship, the relationship ended, and you still have kind of a longing, you, you wonder, how would it have worked out? I wonder how it would have worked out. At 2B, uh, notice conflict here. We have different interests in conflict. Probably a central conflict, though, is that conflict that she has within herself, wishing that somehow the relationship could have worked out. By the way, 2B also, symbolism. What's the best symbol for you? Some will see it as the light ending at the end of the day. Some will see it as the leaves falling off of the trees, right? Some will see it as that bus door that slams shut just as she's saying goodbye. The, symbol in, the symbolism of somehow a definitive ending to something. At 3A, what is for you the title that best works, or the text that best works to demonstrate this? Maybe it's a film, maybe it's a TV show, Maybe it's a song that plays this same game of a lost love that somehow people long to be able to recover, but time moves on, people move on, and the relationship is done. Of course, at 3B, the obvious question is, is there any part of the story you can connect with? Is there a relationship that ended for you and then you didn't see that individual for quite some time and then all of a sudden there you are. I remember a sophomore saying this happened at the end of my freshman year of school and I fell in love with someone in my class and then abruptly it ended on the last day of school. Kind of silly ending. We got in a fight over something that was silly and in the end we both just didn't talk to each other. No texting, no phoning. And then on the very first day of the sophomore year I came around the corner and there she was walking right at me and we literally walked into each other and there was this odd moment of a hundred days had come and gone of summer and all this stuff had happened but there had been no contact of any kind and yet all of a sudden BAM there we were right back again and we were you could she, the student said you could feel that there was still some kind of weird energy there but then the obvious question is what do you say hello how's it going 
uh, and the story resurrected a lot of those kinds of emotions as well. Again, the beauty of a really gifted writer who can present for us uh, an amazing amount of energy in a very small number of words, uh, the great Langston Hughes. Thank you.